How to double your property rent. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein, add some schnapps, because we're going to need it for this one from Yahoo. It's, it's a, a fantastic, easy trick that everyone can do to double the rental income from your property, guys. You know, you'd be insane not to do this. Insane. Utterly crazy. Utterly crazy. And before we go any further, I'm, I'm going to take a shot of coffee and I'm going to let you... Well, I'll ask you all, please, in the comments, let's play a little game. What do you think this trick is? What do you think this this brilliant idea is? And let us know in the comments and then we'll see if you're right. And I'll have a sip. And don't, don't worry, guys, I'm not putting schnapps in my coffee, although I'm sometimes tempted to. It would probably make the rants a lot more chilled or even, even more angry. We're, we're going... Um, we're still allowed to go out here in Queensland and we're going to a neighbor's on Friday. So Rachel bought us some dark and stormy, nice bunny rum cans. Oh, it's so smooth. It goes down so smooth. And the problem is, you know, it's Friday and today's Monday. It's not going to last that long. I think it'll disappear in a few days. It's probably just the test run for us to you know, get used to drinking rum and Coke. Oh, sorry, the rum and uh, ginger beer. A hashtag not sponsored, but I bloody well love to be. So let's have a look. This trick could double your rental income. Real estate investing is a national pastime in Australia, but few are aware of a trick that could double the rental income for landlords. This amazing trick. Wow. Few are aware of it. Sign me up. Sign me up. Sydney pharma pharmacist Hansel Yu told Yahoo Finance that his weekly rental income went from $320 to $630 after building a small granny flat in the backyard of his investment property. See, you just have to build an entire other building or structure to double your rent. That is the trick, guys. That is the trick. You know, I mean, one thing I would suggest is if you're looking at investment properties, look at where you can have the capability for that. And there's some few town planning restrictions or requirements that we'll talk about here. But still, we'll, we'll look at that later. He bought his Western Sydney house in 2012 for four, 343000 specifically looking for enough yard space to pull off the idea. We targeted this particular house and land because the land size was over 600 square meters, but only had a small house on it, he said. Including planning and regulation fees, the granny flat cost 120000 to build from start to finish and was completed in approximately three months. So the rental yield went from 4.8% to 9.5% in a matter of weeks. Not bad. Not bad. Many outer uh, suburban Sydney and Melbourne councils now have rules allowing the construction of granny flats without the hassle of development approvals if they meet certain criteria. Those incentives were brought in to increase housing stock for a fast growing population. Well, are we still going to have this fast growing population? Are we still going to have it? I mean, I, I honestly, granny flats are a great idea because they allow people to age in place. They allow people to age in place, not always as a way of, you know, renting it out to two parties. Sure, that's a way to improve your yield. But you can have, you know, the grandparents living living and helping with the kids, annoying the kids, you know. Now, the kids will always head out to, to granddad's caravan, you know, to get all, all his carb-loaded chips and things and annoy him and play with him. And it's good for them to have, you know, elders around as well. But, you know, it can also increase your yield. I mean, it's not much of a trick, really. Do people not realize that this is an option? I, maybe not. Maybe everyone running and buying. I guess this is the advantage of actually owning a piece of land and not just a box in the sky and a share of the land and being under the, the dictates of the body corporate. Granny flats built this way generally can't be subdivided into a second property, so will always remain under one title. But if you don't mind these caveats, it's a cheap and easy way to supercharge returns on your investment. Plus depreciation on a new income producing building can provide tax benefits. He advises thinking carefully about the size of the granny flat so that one doesn't spend too much in proportion to the additional income that will come in later. The rental yield difference between a one and two bedroom granny flat is not great, he said. Consider buying just a one bedroom granny flat if the capital costs of building is substantially different. So, I mean, there we have it. There is the strategy. And let's have a look. Let's jump over here. 
and we'll look at this is from Brisbane City Council and we'll just read through this if people are interested in it because there are a few considerations um, and this is for Brisbane because well this is where I live and where I work Brisbane City Council Development City Plan 2014 in consultation with the community to support a simpler, clearer and streamlined development assessment process. This plan guides Brisbane's land use and development to support population growth. Now, if you're looking at getting in, doing any of these type of projects, your first step is to become familiar with the city plan. You can get it online everywhere. There's also PD online where you can see maps and see all the overlays and restrictions. Like on my side here, we've got you know, there is a flood mitigation, a little creek, you know, a few kilometers away. And just the corner edge of my side is in that zone, in that zone. So that affects the, the levels that I have to build the building on. We're never going to get it. Even when they had the flooding here in Brisbane, there was no issues. But it's still one thing to manage. So, and granny flats, the approval requirements. So city plan refers to an extension to an existing dwelling house in a residential zone for a granny flat as a secondary dwelling. It can be a maximum of 80 square meters in size. A granny flat for a member of your household does not need council approval. This is as long as you meet the accepted development subject to requirement criteria in the dwelling house code or the dwelling house small lot code. I'd hate to see you try and fit an 80 square meter granny flat. I guess if you're building up on a small lot, you could do it. You could do it. Small lots are less than 450 square meters, or for a rear lot, less than 600 square meters, excluding the access way. You will need to lodge a development application if the granny flat is bigger than 80 meters in size. It's more than 20 meters from the main house. Okay, so you've got these, these requirements. You will need a development application for dual occupancy if you're renting it to someone who does not form part of your household. So there's the thing. If you want to do this, this fantastic trick to increase the yield of your property, you'll have to do a dual occupancy. And what happens if the, the risk is, if you don't do it for your granny flat, then you sell it on. Has it got dual occupancy if someone's buying it as investment property? You'd hopefully, hopefully your lawyers will catch that when they're doing their due diligence, but it's something for you to check. It's something, and you can get the council... You can go to the council website and download all this data. You, I'd suggest you do it. Look at your house. See what your council has freely available for development applications on your house. If your house is so old it has nothing, then you know you, they may be referring to like historical aerial images to determine how old your house is. And that, that can have significant impacts, particularly here in Queensland. It can restrict what you can do. It really can. Household definition. So let's see what council defines as a household. That'll, that'll be interesting. Council defines a household as an individual or group of two or more related or unrelated people who reside in the dwelling. The common intention is to live together on a long-term basis and make uh, co common provisions for food or other essential living. A household can be household can be one person maintaining a household, two or more people related by blood, marriage, or adoption, up to five children under the age of 18 not related, and one or two adults who have care for them, no more than five unrelated people. So you can't have no more than five unrelated people. So when you've put in six students into a house, it's, it's more like a bunk dorm. So on overlays and neighborhood plannings affected by property. And you can have a look here at the interactive mapping tool. And here's the, the setback requirements. And this is another piece of legislation here in Queensland, the Queensland Development Code. So it's not, this is different from the town plan. It's another, uh, another code up above. And you can download that and go through it. And this is all, it's all just, it's not much fun going through it. Sets boundary setbacks for granny flats on standard size lots. City plan does not include boundary setbacks. Dwelling house small lot code identifies boundary setbacks for granny flats on small lots. Boundary setbacks help protect privacy and amenity and help with property maintenance. And they also ensure there's less risk of fire mitigation, fire spreading. So the maximum site cover. And here's another thing. This is how much you can put on the site. They want to have, you know, space around it. 50% for 400 lots, 60% for 300, you know, 80% or for lost, lots less than 200 square meters. 200 square meters. And then you've got your height restrictions here as well. Parking requirements. So, you know, and a determine, determine if an application is required. You can talk to council to do this. So I would go through all of this. And if you want a town planner to help you with this, they're, they're good. Or architects that deal specifically in you know, residential property or building designers as well. We don't tend to do much of this stuff. We do it now and then when people approach us, but it's not something we chase because it, it's it's a competitive market, really. It's a very competitive market. You can get a spec off the plan, granny flat, 
for quite a reasonable rate. If you're going for a spec builder like that, the only suggestion I would make would be to go with an Australian standards construction contract, go through that and be familiar with it. And maybe hire another party to act as the contract administrator between you and them. Because some of the master builder contracts with regards to defects liability, if you don't spot it, 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 it it's iffy. It's, the thing is, every organization, every organization, including the Institute, Institute of Architects, writes contracts to benefit their members. So we want you to use these contracts because it's in the best interest of us. Even though with regards to residential work, that can all get thrown out of the, out of the window because you know we're the big bad professional taking advantage of the little mum and dad. Still, it makes sense. To, if you're going to do it, go Australian Standard, guys. Have a look at those because they're fair and reasonable contracts. There's my advice. So there is the secret to doubling your rental income and your yield. What do you think, guys? Good idea? Bad idea? I think it's, you know, I think it could be quite smart. If someone has a property, builds a granny flat in, they could, you know, live in it and then rent out the house so they don't have to leave so far. There are opportunities here, particularly for aging in place. And it's something to consider. But you can't do this if you get a box in the sky, can you? So maybe that'll increase demand for housing. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Would it be something I'll be looking at doing now? Not a chance. I would be waiting until until the support mechanisms in the economy die down. I, I'm particularly worried about the, well, the fact that people can now trade while insolvent and directors aren't personally responsible. Wait for that to disappear. Now's the perfect time to do a whole lot of research and become familiar with it. I mean, you could do, you could do the town planning yourself, guys. You don't need to pay a town planner. There's four grand saving right there. You know, four grand saving. You could do the design yourself. You can draw it all up, draw it up, then get a, a, a draftsperson or an architect to prepare the construction documents for you. Talk to an engineer, talk to a, get the soil test done yourself. You can do all of this yourself. Get it all organized and provide the information. It's a way to do it. Maybe I should do a video on, on some step-by-step -step guides. I think some people are, have been asking for it. I wanted to do a Udemy course on it. We'll have to see if I get time. Let me know in the comments if you'd find that interesting, guys. And if you'd be willing, if you think it'd be worth a Udemy course, you know, ten, fifteen dollars for people to do it, because it take a while to do. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and want to support the content I create here. There are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next episode.